we've said that all of our little compasses are going to form a circle around our current our wire carrying current now one thing that we need to then figure out is whether the circle is going in one direction or the other direction. And we're always just going to call that clockwise versus counterclockwise. And the way we're going to do that is with something called the right hand rule. And very briefly in mechanics, we typically touch on the right hand rule when we think about angular momentum and torque and things like that. And normally we can get pretty far in mechanics without really worrying about that. But in magnetism, we 100% have to use the right hand rule. It's the only way you can get through this. There will be later videos where I return to the right hand rule and my plan is to make one video where I specifically go through the different situations we're using the right hand rule because we're also using slightly different versions of the right hand rule. But briefly, in this case, we're using the right hand rule to figure out the direction. And in this case, direction means that we know that if I have a circle here, it's going to be tangent. But then the question is, do you have north going kind of up into the left or down into the right? And the right hand rule tells you because your fingers are pointing that way, that's the way north is pointing. So that's the basic idea. Now what's important to recognize is that if I have a compass here, north is going to be that way. It's on a different part of the circle, so the tangent direction is different. So to really understand the direction, we have to know where it is on the circle. Everywhere on the circle, the compass has a different direction. So that's really important. Whenever you are dealing with magnetic fields around wires, you can't just say the magnetic field has the same direction everywhere. You actually have to know what point you're talking about to talk about the direction it has. This is our first version of the right hand rule and what this is for is for finding the direction of the magnetic field from a wire carrying current. Now there's going to be slightly varied versions of this for, for instance, the magnetic field from a moving point charge, uh, which we'll do in the next section. And so this one in particular is, is the easiest to think about, but there are other versions of the right hand rule. So if this looks slightly familiar, but you feel like you've learned it differently, you've possibly learned a right hand rule that's useful in a different situation. So the first thing is that you must use your right hand. If your right hand is in a cast and you can't do this, um, maybe we'll talk to the Office of Accessible Education about borrowing someone else to come in so you can use their hand. Because you really can't use your left hand. If you use your left hand for this, all of your answers are opposite. And I don't want you to try to think through that every time. So make sure you're always using your right hand. And this is especially tricky because you write with, well, you may be right with your right hand. I do, I'm right-handed. So left-handed people have a slight advantage here because if they're writing with their left hand, they can go ahead and look at their right hand. But if you are right-handed, put your pencil down and actually do this with your right hand. So we're going to put our thumb in the direction of the current. So the current here is up. In this picture, there are two choices of current, right? Because we have a wire. Currents either flowing up or currents flowing down. And remember that the definition of current is the direction our positive charges would be moving. Now, you at this point know that negative charges, electrons, are actually our charge carriers, so this actually corresponds to negative charges moving down. So just be careful about this, because if you're told that an electron is moving down, that means the current is going up. So you put your right thumb pointing up, and then you just let your, your fingers curl around like you're giving a thumbs up. And the direction your fingers go indicate the direction of the magnetic field. So your fingers are coming this way around, which is then the way your magnetic field is going. So you can imagine if the current was going down, you would be giving a thumbs down and the current would be wrapping the opposite way around the wire. So practice this, make sure you understand this, and again in a, a separate video we'll do some more practicing. So we need to think a little bit about some of the ways that we actually are going to represent these different directions, especially because as you can see this has to be a three-dimensional picture and that's really hard for us to draw. So what we can do here is 
use these edge face views. So we're looking directly at the current. And the current here is into the page. And what that means is we're using these X's. So using X's and circles would be current into the page. Out of the page, we're going to use circles with dots in the center. Now, if we want to talk about the magnetic field itself and we want to talk about into the page, we can just use X's. Usually how the book does this is to put current in circles and fields just without the circles and out will then just be some dots. So that's how we can do this in a way that we can see clearly the circles. So again, we're looking directly down the wire so we can represent that direction as well as what we clearly see. So this is really helpful to now understand we have three ways to visualize what's happening with the field. One is to look at those compasses and note again that with the compasses you see that the north direction is basically forming a circle. And this is a good time to test whether or not you can use the right hand rule. In this case, because the current is into the page, you need to point your thumb into the page. Make sure you're using your right thumb. And what you should see is that your fingers are curling around that way. And depending on how you position your, your hand, maybe you see it curling that way. Well, that's the same direction. That's the way north is going. So we can draw magnetic field vectors, which are basically all of our little compass needles. Now the one caveat is that you want to draw bigger vectors where the field is stronger. That's going to be closer to the wire. We haven't actually defined the equation for this yet, but we will uh, soon. But closer to the wire gives you a stronger field. Now a second way we can do this is to use magnetic field lines. Now this should be reminiscent of what we did for electric field vectors and lines. Same rules apply for the most part. Note that now we have continuous circles, again going in the way that your fingers led, so in this case they are either going to be clockwise or counterclockwise circles, and here we see that these are clockwise, CW circles. And the, the tighter the spacing between the field lines, the stronger your magnetic field. So you see that the spacing out here is bigger, which means your magnetic field is weaker. So this is one way uh, to do the visualization. Again, we can do the compasses. We typically don't draw those. And then you can do vectors or field lines or actually combine them together. Since these are all a view of the magnetic field very clearly face on, but we're looking down the current, I want to do an example where we see the side of the wire, which means we're actually looking at the magnetic field edge on. Now, in this case, Again, I'm kind of looking at an edge-on view of the wire. We want to represent what the magnetic field is doing. I can't draw what's happening in all of three space. I can really only draw in the plane of the paper. So I'm going to, in this case, draw what's happening above, and I'm going to draw what's happening below. Now there is field around the entire wire. So there is field, for instance, between me and the wire, but I'm not going to draw that. I'm just going to draw what's directly above and directly below, like I've taken a slice through three space and I have this thin section of the wire. So use your right hand rule. Point your thumb to the right in the direction that the current is going. Now if I'm looking kind of straight at my palm, my fingers are kind of pointing up and then if I curl them a little bit they come towards me and then they eventually come down. So now what you have to imagine, and you can maybe do this for real, is holding a pencil in your right hand. The pencil represents the wire. Your thumb should be really aligned with the pencil and then you hold it in front of you. Now if you've wrapped your fingers completely around the pencil, you'll see that between you and the pencil, your fingers are pointing down. How I have it, I have basically knuckles. But now what I want to draw here is what's happening completely below and above. So above my pencil, I see that I have knuckles facing towards me. How did we draw the magnetic field coming out of the page? Dots. So we have dots representing the electric field vectors coming out of the page. It's not really possible to show that some are greater magnitude than others. That's really hard to do. But I can show that above it, it's coming out of the page. 
Well, what about below? Again, this is where it's helpful to start doing this initially with a pencil. If I've wrapped my fingers tightly around the pencil, then the tips of my fingers are actually pressed against my palm. They're pointing away from me, and that would be below the pencil. So below the wire, your field is actually going into the page. So again, think about us basically taking a slice through this such that we can see the wire edge on. And then what you're saying is what's happening here and what's happening there. So in one case, we have it coming out of the page. And in the other case, we have it going into the page. So hopefully that's, that's a little bit clear. And again, later I will do a, a better video looking specifically at the right hand rule for you to understand this.